Amen, amen, amen. Uh, welcome. We welcome you uh, to True Life Christian Church. I am your uh, your pastor, Pastor Tim. Listen, I just want you to uh, make that same declaration. If you believe that all you have is his, uh, if you want to make that same declaration, I just want you to uh, put that worship in your heart. I want that song of worship to be in your heart today. Uh, I really encourage you uh, to uh, carve out some space, uh, dedicate some space in your home, uh, and begin to engage the Father uh, in this time of worship. Listen, uh, we invite you to experience God with us today. Uh, I pray that, um, you know, this message and this moment and this worship experience reaches you where you are. I know that we have to deal with uh, the heaviness of this pandemic and it seems like the numbers are going in the opposite direction of uh, where we want them to go. But listen, God is still able. He is still faithful. Uh, and he is still showing himself strong uh, for us. Uh, listen, you still have time. Uh, it's still early in the hour. If, if there's someone that you think would be blessed uh, by this July series that we have been in, um, we've, been, we've been talking about uh, a, a break, the broken, and a breaking. And I've been, I've been excited. I've been blessed. Uh, listen, I rewatched last week. If you missed last week, I encourage you to go to our YouTube channel and check it out uh, because I think that the message was, uh, it was on time and I feel like uh, God was really speaking to us uh, in that space. So I hope that uh, I implore you, amen, to go out and uh, check it out on YouTube where you can rewatch on Instagram or IGTV. Uh, listen, I want you to give God a, a hand clap of praise in the space that you are in right now. 
because he is worthy to be praised. The Bible says, from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, his name alone is worthy to be praised. Listen, I promised you last week that I would not forget that we needed to uh, take communion, and I have carved out time for us to do that today. It's going to be within the last 10 minutes of uh, our, our virtual broadcast. Amen. Uh, I pray that uh, I can't see you smiling, but I pray that you are smiling uh, with insight, with excitement and anticipation for what God is going to do in our lives. Uh, so if you if you want to take a moment, uh, I really want you to be focused on the worship experience. Amen. Uh, but I'm going to I'm going to give you some grace as you prepare uh, your uh, your juice and your cracker so that we can uh, partake of his broken body and his shed blood. Uh, so as I prepare to share with you a song of worship, I want you to run to your refrigerator, run to your kitchen, uh, take a moment, get yourself a cracker, get yourself, listen, I know that generally we like grape juice because it's the most reflective of his, his shed blood, but if you have apple juice, if you got orange juice, I, I'm giving you permission to, uh, to use whatever you need today uh, so that we can experience uh, uh, and, and, and together experience uh, communion. Amen. 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 All right. I'm gonna start my song. Listen. I'm listen. I listened to my to my singing last week, and I'm gonna tell you, for a guy who doesn't lead worship, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad for good old uh, Tim Holly right here. Amen. My wife was like, uh, "You need to go up right there." So she's trying to direct me from the back, but uh, I'm not gonna let her get in my way of my worship. Amen. Um, I am going to play this song, and I pray that it blesses you as we sing this today. Amen? Amen. It's a simple song. Amen. It's a simple song. Uh, it says, Pour Me Out, Lord. Yes, God. 
yours, Father. Listen, uh, I'm going to pray with you right now. Uh, I pray that I pray that you were able to enter into your worship moment. I pray that you were able to create an atmosphere for, for the Father to show up and hang out with you on today. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we, we acknowledge your excellency, Father. God, we, we make your name uh, great in this atmosphere today, God. Uh, we, we magnify you today, Lord. God, I, I openly declare my love for you, Father. And I, and I say to you on today, Lord, that I won't place anyone before you. And even now, God, I pray that we would create an atmosphere, Lord, where you can dwell, Father. We would create a place of worship, Lord, where you could be glorified, Father. I pray right now that you would begin to uh, enter the hearts of man. And even as you begin to uh, uh, do a new thing on the inside of us, God, let us not only feel it, but let it be a reflection and a beacon of light for those that we come in contact with, Lord. For we declare right now, Lord, that our greatest ability to witness will be the lifestyle by which we live for you, Father. And so right now, God, I pray that you would make us whole, that you would transform our thinking, that you would elevate our thoughts, Father, that you would uh, uh, begin to mend all of the areas on the inside that would allow us to be the greatest reflection of you in the earth. Father, I declare right now that perfect love casts out all fear. We won't be afraid any longer, Lord. We won't be afraid to press into your presence. God, but we will feel your love and we will receive your love, Father. We will allow your love to take over our lives and, and, and forever be changed because of you. So, Father, we ask right now that you would do it. We ask that you would show up in the spaces that we're in. We ask right now that there would be a rebirthing. Thank you, Father. There would be a rebirthing in the atmosphere, Father. That this would be a time of refreshing and that this would be a time of restoration, Father. And that this would be a moment, God, not only that we would uh, live, live in a place of true surrender and repentance, God, but this would be the catalyst for everything that's to come because we take this journey with you, Father. So I pray for everyone that can hear my voice. I pray for everyone listening. I pray right now that you would not only speak to them through this device, but that you would speak to them right in the midst of where they are, right in the midst of the situation, right in the midst of turmoil, right in the midst of heaviness. God, I pray that you would be the voice that brings the calm. I declare that you're able. We believe it in Jesus. We speak it in faith. In Jesus' name we do pray, amen. Listen, somebody somebody type amen for me. I'm going to come back. I'm going to read these comments later, and I'm going to see I'm gonna see who said amen because I want to know who came into agreement with that prayer. Amen? I want you to type amen. And then after you do that, uh, I, I want you uh, to, to, to find your Bible. Listen, I'm, I'm old school, y'all. I, I know I'm young. You see me in, in my jeans and my sneakers, uh, but I like, to, I like to have an actual Bible. And uh, I want you to start making a declaration that this is my Bible, I believe it, I read it, and I live it. Amen? This is my Bible. I believe it, I read it, and I live it. I want you to live and stand on nothing else other than this word. If you can't believe anything that people tell you, you can believe this word. And so we are a Bible. We are a Bible-teaching, Bible-based church. Uh... I know y'all are like, why do y'all have church on Saturday? Because it works. Amen. Saturday works for us uh, because Jesus is bigger than Sunday. Amen. I, I have a shirt that says it. Uh, Jesus is bigger than Sunday. And I don't want you to be afraid uh, to worship. Listen, I, I like to believe that we're getting a head start. Amen. On engaging God uh, over the weekend. Amen. Uh, and when God uh, gives us the opportunity, my prayer is that we would have weekend services on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, but right now we worship on Saturday because it works and we believe God that he would manifest his blessings and his glory for us in this moment. Amen. Listen, I want you to do me a favor. After you have located your Bible, amen, uh, I want you to turn with me uh, to the gospel according to Luke chapter number five. Luke chapter five. Luke chapter five. We've been in a, in a series for July. Our July series has been a break the broken and a breaking. Listen, last week, bless my, bless my soul. Amen. And, and I pray that uh, I can give you enough content today uh, uh, 
to, to really pull together uh, the context. I'm going to have limited time because we have so much to do within a short window. Uh, but if you will just bear with me for a moment, uh, I believe that there is a word that God wants us to deal with today. And uh, uh, we're going to go to Luke chapter 5. I'm going to start at verse number 1. And I'm going to give you this thought. I'm going to give you my thought first. Amen. Breaking in to overflow. Breaking into overflow. Breaking into overflow. Somebody say it with me. Breaking into overflow. I didn't hear y'all. Say it one more time. Breaking into overflow. Because I know if we was together, I would have to ask you three times to say it before I could hear you. Where I would believe that you believe what we're saying. Breaking into overflow. Amen. Uh, so th these words you will find here. I'm going to go, you know, I love ESV, but I'm going to go back and forth between ESV and King James today. Amen. Uh, it says here, it says, on one occasion, uh, while, the crowd, while the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake at uh, Gennesaret. And he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. I'm going to skip down to verse 5. Amen. I'm going to come back to the other verses. I'm going to skip down to verse 5. And it says, And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing. But at your word, I will let down the nets. Somebody say, at your word, I will let down the nets. Amen. And so I want you to think about this today, breaking into overflow. So the Bible says that uh, uh, Jesus is dealing with a crowd of people. Hey, I'm going to try my best to make it personal for you today, amen. It says that Jesus is uh, standing on the shore of the lake at the Nazareth. And this is, th this is basically the Sea of Galilee. And so the Bible begins to talk about where Jesus is located and as he's standing here, Jesus is always missionally minded. Jesus is always missionally minded. And so he sees these two boats and he recognizes that the gentlemen that should be occupying the boat have chosen to get out of the boat. Amen. They've chosen to get out of the boat. Now, I could go through a long array of things in terms of what the boat represents and all these things. But, but the long and short of it is these guys are fishermen. And it is their job, it is their responsibility to catch fish. Amen. And some might say that when these men are in the boat, they are operating in purpose. Amen. They are operating in purpose. And sometimes when you find yourselves operating in purpose, you do not always uh, walk away with everything that you believe purpose should render. Amen. They are standing here uh, trying to be dedicated. Amen. Trying to stay focused on purpose. They are uh, uh, being responsible with their portion of goods. They are trying their best to uh, manage what God has given them the responsibility over. So they are out here and they are fishing. Amen. And, and if I make it personal for you, I would say to you that we have to see ourselves just as these men do, trying their best to carry out the assignment that God has given them in this season. And y'all might be like, well, preacher, they were just out there. They were just out there working. They were just out there trying to catch fish. And, and what I'm trying to get you to understand is even when you are simply just doing what you believe you are a uh, purpose to do, even if it's in the natural it is still an opportunity for God to be glorified. Amen. It is still an opportunity for God to be glorified. But, but I would say that by the nature of how things generally unfold, these guys were operating in purpose. They were operating in purpose. And when we are operating in purpose, there are moments and times where we will encounter difficulty. And the difficulty that we encounter oftentimes puts us in a hard place where we don't know what to do next. And so what these men have done, the Bible says that they have chosen after they have spent a significant amount of time out all night 
trying their best to capture the thing that they need so they can sustain in their lives, they are unable to do so. And in their inability to do what they know that they, they've probably been skilled to do, in their inability to capture what they would normally capture, in their inability to carry out the assignment, they have chosen to get out of the boat. And I would ask you the question, how many of you have made a conscious decision that when it has not worked, you have decided to get out of the boat? Amen. Now, now we could say that uh, this proverbial boat that we're talking about is you getting out of assignment. This, this boat that we're talking about could be you uh, uh, disengaging from purpose. This boat that we're talking about uh, could be the thing that God is trying to use to carry you through from one season to the next. But because you don't have uh, or have not captured what you think you should have captured by now, you have now chosen to walk away. And what I want to say to you is, I think that you have walked away too soon. Woo. I think you've walked away too soon. You, you, you've walked away from the thing that you know gives you the greatest level of happiness. You have walked away from the thing that fulfills a, a purpose. You have walked away from the thing that puts a smile on your face. You have walked away from the thing that gives you the greatest sense of joy and the greatest sense of accomplishment. Because it has not worked does not mean it will not work. Amen. That's a good point. Because it has not worked does not mean it will not work. Uh, I, I've heard stories about uh, Michael, Michael Jordan being cut from basketball teams. I, I've heard stories about Albert Einstein trying to figure things out. I've, I've heard stories about uh, the gentleman that created the light bulb and, and how many times it did not work before it worked. Amen. And all I'm suggesting to you is that business or that thing, that passion, that energy, that excitement, that book, that idea that you keep trying to figure out how it's going to work, just because it has not worked, does not mean it will not work. And all I'm saying to you is, do not abandon your boat. Amen. Don't abandon your boat. Don't abandon your boat. This, this ain't the season for you to get out the boat. I know you think that you, you spent enough time on it. I know you think that you, as, as Simon said, uh, uh, but Master, we've toiled at it all night. Amen. And, and, and many of us would begin to feel a level of frustration after we've been trying our best to get something to work and we are not gaining any momentum. We've been trying our best to make this idea work. My wife is constantly allowing her wheels to turn and she has all the, listen, if y'all need help trying to figure out how to get your idea to work, I, I tell you this woman will have 17 different ways to get your idea to work, amen. And, and, and so she spins countless hours trying to figure out how to get things to work. And so right now I'm, I'm telling all her business, but she's developing an app. And so in her effort to develop an app, this is not the first time that she's tried to develop an app or tried to develop something. And so she has spent thousands of dollars before and it hasn't worked. She spent countless hours. She spent countless time. She's written books. She's done all these things. And, and one day she said to me, I'm doing all of this and it hasn't worked yet. And I said, don't worry. If you keep at it, when the time comes, it'll work. Uh, 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 the, the, the great pastor, uh, I call him great just because that's the thing that I say, but the pastor, Rick Warren, wrote a book. And in the book, he called the book, uh, I, I read The Purpose Driven Church. Uh, the Purpose Driven Church. And as I was reading this book, he said something in the book that I, that I, that I now live by. Uh, he, he, he gave this analogy of uh, the guys that go out to serve. Amen. Guys go out and they, and they, and they, they want to serve. But the thing that the, these guys, as, as much practice as they put in, as much wax as they put on the board, as much time as they spend in the water, uh, they can have the best type of surfboard. They can know everything about how to properly uh, hold their legs so that they can, they, they, they can uh, prevent themselves from falling. You can do everything you know to do. But until God brings a way, there will never be a moment for you to surf. And so what I'm saying to you is, it requires God to come in and do something to make the thing that you believe God for work. Let me tell you.
you what he says in the Bible. The Bible says that Jesus is standing on the lake shore. He's, he's, he's encamped by people trying to get the word out of him. He, he sees these two boats. He sees the fishermen that should be in the boats. And they have gotten out of the boats. And the reason they have gotten out of the boats is because the thing that they look to capture has not happened. And so the Bible says this here in verse number 3. It says, getting into one of the boats. Amen. Getting into one of the boats. It wasn't until Jesus stepped in, in the boat that things would begin to change for these fishermen. Woo, Jesus. And so what I'm suggesting to you is as much effort as you are making, as much momentum as you have on your own, the only moment you are going to break into overflow is when you allow God to step in your boat. Amen. That's a good spot for somebody to shout amen. Amen. It says that uh, uh, getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and he taught the people from the boat. Listen, there are moments and times where you have to allow God to get in your boat and begin to teach you how to do it in God. Amen. See, these guys were only operating out of their ability and out of their skill. They were operating as uh, regular fishermen. They were operating out of their own intellect. They were operating out of their own uh, ideas. They were operating out of their own systems. They were operating without a true dispensation of God's grace and glory to create a wave in their lives so that something could transform and transpire for them. Woo! And so, so Jesus gets in the boat, and as, after he gets in the boat, he begins to have a conversation. He begins to teach them. He begins to reveal himself. He begins to show them how God moves. He begins to show them how they should do it. He begins to give them revelation. He begins to partner with them on their journey so that they can acquire what they were called to do. Somebody say breaking into overflow. Amen. Somebody say breaking in to overflow. Uh, uh, so, so the Bible says uh, he, he's in the boat and he asks them to move a little bit away from the land. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, whoo, Jesus, he said, put out into the deep and let down your nets for catch. Put out into the deep. Uh, I, I think, I think we, we've, heard, we've heard this context before. And, and I would say this is a moment where uh, uh, God is calling us to the deep. Uh, we, we, we like to deal far too often in, in shallow spaces. Uh, we, we like to deal in uh, shallow territory. We, amen. We like to deal in the territory where we can see the bottom of where we're standing. And so many of us will, will go out and we'll be, we'll go out to the ocean and, and, and because the currents and the waves can, can get real heavy, many of us don't like to move beyond where our feet can touch uh, uh, the bottom of the, uh, of the ocean. Amen. But, but if you are going to acquire what God is looking for you to acquire in this season, you're going to have to move outside of the realm of this shallow space that you've been dealing in. You are going to have to move outside of this little territory that you've given God to work in. You are going to have to move outside of your checklist of things that you think God should do. You are going to have to move outside of your comfort zone if you are ever going to see the things, the great things that you want God to blow your mind with ain't going to happen in shallow territory. It's not going to happen in shallow territory. Your, your boat doesn't even get enough traction in, in, in shallow territory. If, if you stay in shallow ground for too long, you might get stuck there and you will never gain the momentum that you were intended to have. So, so, so as you put your boat in the water, uh, many times uh, you've got to allow your boat to coast out into the area where you can then turn the engines on so that you can move into a greater depth so that you can acquire something more. But you won't trust God enough to move outside of the space that you're able to dwell in because you only want to deal in the area where you can see God moving. But what if God wants to move beyond where you can see? What if God wants to move beyond what you can comprehend? What if God wants to move you out to an area 
in the ocean and then, and then give you a very simple instruction. Cast your net into the deep. See, God is waiting for you to trust him enough so that he can unlock overflow in your life. And you've been toiling and you've been out there. The, the Simon said, uh, uh, verse 5, he said, and Simon answered, Master, we toil all night at this thing. We've been working at this thing for years. I've been believing you, but you've been believing God in a shallow space. You've been believing God in a place where there is no death. You've been believing God where the fish ain't hanging out. And so he says, uh, uh, Master, uh, King James says it this way, nevertheless. I, I, lo I love when, man, I love when the Bible says, nevertheless. He says, um, Simon, I'm reading King James now. He said, Simon, and Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night, and I have taken nothing. I've been working at this all night, and I got nothing to show for it. I've been out here in this water. It's cold. I, I, I can smell the fish. I know this is where the fish hang out, but I've been toiling at this thing. I've been believing you for years, and I ain't seen nothing yet, God. And so if I give you a little bit of last week, and I, I know I got only a little bit of time, if I give you a little bit of last week, amen, because I want to I wanna make sure I'm bringing the text full circle. Uh, last week I said, because you have not seen God do what you believe God for, it started creating a crack in you. And it started making you stiff. And, and as a result, you would begin to break and end up in broken, fragmented pieces with a hope and expectation. But because you have not seen it yet, you have stopped believing. And you stop believing. You get out of the boat. You stop trusting. You've abandoned, hear me, you've abandoned purpose. You've abandoned purpose. And, and the boat is meant to carry you to destiny. But you can't get there because you, you haven't seen it happen. But I guarantee you, if you can find, even if it's just a small mustard seed of faith in this season, to believe God when he says, get back in the boat. And, 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 and roll with me out here and I'm going to take you to a place where I can then unlock overflow. Woo, Jesus. I'm trying to unlock overflow in your life. I'm trying to get you to break into overflow. But if you never trust God, if you never put your hope and your faith, if you never put your true dependence, if you never stand firm on what you believe, you will never see, you will never get to overflow. So he says, nevertheless, th th this, this nevertheless moment is, is a, a, a crossing of wheels. Hallelujah. It's, it's a crossing of wheels. You, are, you have an expectation and a desire for how you think things should go. And then here comes the will of God. And you got to make a decision right at this crossroad. Am I going to trust what I've been doing or will I now trust God? And God says, I just need you to trust me. And, and, and those that understand what I'm saying, you have had a nevertheless moment. Nevertheless, I know this hasn't worked. And, and what I'm saying to you is, my wife had that same moment. I know, I know this thing I tried didn't work. I tried that. I, I spent thousands there. It didn't work. Nevertheless, God has planted something on, it, on the inside of me that I can't disconnect from. I can't abandon. That's like me saying, listen, I know God gave me a word. I know God called me to preach. I know that my purpose is to bring other people to a place in God that they can grow. I, but, but then I'm going to say, well, we ain't really seeing it the way I thought we would see it. So maybe true life ain't it, God. Maybe, 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 this, maybe this ain't the thing. But God is saying, nope, you've been dealing in the shallow space in your faith. Your, your, your faith has been shallow for what God can do. And you keep dealing in this small space, but if you will make the declaration, nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, the Bible says, they enclosed, I'm going to go back to ESV because I, I like how ESV says it. Verse 6, and when they had done this, 
They enclosed a large number of fish, and their nets were breaking. King James says, and their nets broke. But I'm talking about a breaking, amen. Uh, breaking into overflow. The Bible says that at this moment, their nets broke. Because when God gives you a revelation, when God takes you to your place of destiny, when God begins to speak a word, when God unlocks something in your life, you will not, the Bible says that he will pour you out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. And here go these men. They have thrown their nets into the water, simply begging on the faith and the word that God had given them. They dropped their nets in the water and, and, and for no reason other than God creating a moment to show his glory and to show his power and to show that he is. Woo! And that he is able and that he is the great I am and that he is the king of kings and that he is the Lord of lords. He has this moment where he unlocks them into a place of overflow. And the Bible says they begin, the fish begin to swim right to where they were. And all I'm saying to you is overflow. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Overflow will come to you. Amen. He, he, he unlocks them into a place of destiny. And after he unlocks it, the Bible says the fish began to swarm and flood the place where the nets were. And, and, and then the nets were so heavy with their catch that the nets began to break. And they, they had broken themselves into overflow. Ooh, Jesus. And the Bible says that after they had broken into overflow... They, they then started calling all their homies. Hey, I got so much that uh, I can't even take this. I can't even carry these fish back. If I put all these fish on the boat, the, the boat might. The Bible actually says the boat began to sink because it was so heavy from what they had caught. And to prevent, this is, this is where you become selfless. Amen. This is where you understand what it, what it means to uh, have a philanthropic purpose. That's why we believe in philanthropy here. That's, that's why we believe in giving. That's why at the beginning of the year I gave away $1,000. Amen. So, so that we would be able to unlock overflow. And, and so what happens is as they begin to, to carry back and pick up everything that God had unlocked for them, what, what, they were, what they were now carrying was too heavy and they had to share the wealth. Listen, I believe that God... I believe that God wants to penetrate your heart, flood you with his glory, put you on a boat, carry you to destiny, and allow you to experience something so great that you can't help but to share the goodness of Jesus Christ. I, I, I would have to imagine, amen, I, I would have to imagine that we are tired of not actually catching what purpose and destiny is supposed to unlock in our lives. I would have to imagine that it's exhausting. I would have to imagine that it's overwhelming and it's frustrating and it becomes somewhat uh, uh, depressing to, to be in this space knowing your potential, knowing the energy, knowing the desire, knowing the vision that God has given you, knowing that there's more and never being able to see it because you never give it over to God. You never let God get in your boat. And all I'm saying to you today is let God get in your boat. Let him in your boat. Let him carry you to destiny so that you can break into overflow. I want you to have victory in every area of your life. I want you to know what it means to believe and to walk in faith. I want you to know what it means to live and, and stand on principles and unlock what God is trying to show you so that your life never has to be void of what he desires for you to have. Listen, if that's, if that's you, amen, if we were together, I would say everyone's standing. If that's you, I simply want you to stand with me in faith and believe. I don't know who's watching. I don't know. I don't know the position that you're in. I don't know what you're dealing with right now in your life. I don't know what you what door you've been knocking at 
that has yet to be open. The only thing I can say to you is that this is the moment for you to allow God to enter into your boat and carry you to a place that will unlock destiny and cause you to break into overflow. Overflow so great that your family, your daughter, your son, your friends, your cousins, even sometimes it goes up, your parents, your aunts and uncles will begin to experience the beauty of what salvation and a right relationship with God would bring. Listen, if that's you, uh, we, have, uh, we have a link for you. Uh, and in that link, you can kind of let us know where you are. Uh, we want you if, you, if you haven't given us your email, we want to connect with you. But beyond just connecting with you, I want you to be saved. I, I want you to, to know what it means to be under the ark and the covering of protection by none other than Jesus. And so if that's you, I want you to let me know. Just, you can hashtag, let's connect. You can email us, I want to connect. But I want to pray for you really quickly. Uh, and I want you to pray this simple prayer, and I'll tell you why. The Bible says that uh, if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, that you're saved. And so I want to be real simple, right? Our, our motto, our, our initiative as a church is a very simple experience. It's worship in the Word. I don't want to make it deep. I don't want it to be so complicated that you don't know what God is trying to do. Amen. It's worship in the Word. It's two things. And so what I'm, what I'm saying to you is salvation doesn't have to be this complicated thing that you can't understand. It's simple. This is what I want you to say. Father, I ask that you would come into my heart. I ask that you would fill me, restore me, refresh me. Father, I ask that you would give me a new tongue. And with that tongue, my confession is you are Lord. I believe you, and I believe your word. Listen, I believe you prayed that prayer with us today, that you are saved. Amen. And, and I want you to experience all of the beautiful, blissful things that a relationship with Jesus brings. Amen. Listen, I want you guys to share this. I want you to share it with somebody that you care about, and I want you to welcome them to the family. Amen. And, and let them know that, that God is here and he just wants to love on you. Amen? Amen. Listen, uh, I'm going to ask you if you have not already uh, gone to get your, 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 your broken body and the shed blood. I am going to ask that you would do that right now. And I'm going to read a really quick passage of scripture. And I'm going to read my passage of scripture, and then we are going to partake of the Lord's Supper. We're going to have communion. Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. Let me get my, my juice in my cracker. Amen. Amen. It says here in 1 Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and at the 23rd verse, it says, For I have received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, the Bible says he broke it. I'm going to break the bread. You break your bread as well. It says that uh, he took it, he had given thanks. Father, we thank you for your son. We thank you for his life. We thank you for what he has done for us. Amen. Uh, it says, and he said, this is my body, which is for you. It says, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way he took a cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant of my blood. Do this 
as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Listen, I want you to take your, 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 your cracker, your bread. I want you to break it. Amen. This is his broken body. I want you to take it. Let's eat together. And I want you to take your juice. It says this is his shed blood. Every time we do this, we do this. This is one of the most important things that we do as a body of believers. To remember and, and, and to commit ourselves to this relationship. He says this, this, this juice is a reflection of my shed blood. Take, let's drink together and think of Calvary. And if I were at the old church, they would sing a song and say, I know it was the blood. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to sing that today. Amen. Uh, but, but I'm so thankful for his blood. Listen, I love you guys so much. I can never, I can never truly put into words how much I love you. I miss you guys more than you will ever know. I cannot wait until we are able to re-engage in a corporate worship experience where I can see your smiling faces, where we can hug, where we can praise and sing and worship and unlock purpose and destiny together. But until we have that moment, uh, until things are safe, we have to do what's best uh, in, in, in this season and in this time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to pray for all of you guys. And in my praying, in my praying, I am going to uh, ask God to change this scenario so that we can get back together soon. Until then, I want to leave you with the song. Uh, I, I heard this on social media this week, and I liked it. And I said, I'm going to sing this, but I want you guys to feel the victory as you walk out into uh, this day and the rest of this week making a declaration uh, that, that you are breaking into overflow. Amen? Um, I love you guys. One second. I'm going to get it loud for y'all.